over the last three weeks, there's been just a tad bit of stress in our lives since my hysterectomy was done for endometrial carcinoma. And some things that reduced it. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Orlean. I'm Gary. And this is Roads of Faith. Our channel is normally about our travels and uh, living tiny. We live in 180 square feet on wheels. We've been doing it for seven years full time. But in uh, the last couple of months, it changed to a health journey for me. I found out in March that I had endometrial carcinoma or suspected of it. And um, that was not confirmed until after my surgery. There's, that was a whole complicated thing. You can watch the first video that explains all of that um, at the top up here. I'll put a link. And the first two weeks after my surgery, I did updates on, on my slow moving stuff but now the last three weeks you haven't heard from us except on our Facebook page that was easier for me to do I've had an eye thing going on I don't know what that's all about it was my eyes have been super dry the skin around them has been really dry my um, the tops of my feet just the toes it's just bizarre weird stuff have been really itchy I don't know if it's because of a result of the surgery, like some things I'm still detoxing from the all the medicines and whatever. Mm. I don't know. It could be because we're in 24 hours um, air conditioning, which we're not used to. We're, we're normally in Wisconsin this time of year. It is right now the very end of June. Uh, first part of July and we normally would be in Wisconsin right now where it can get hot but it doesn't it's not as intense as it has been here hmm. yeah so we don't know what's going on hopefully this is all going to clear up over time but uh, there's just been a lot of other things too we wanted to talk about some of the things that we've been kind of going through um, I had a big decision that I had to make about having radiation or not and some of Gary's feelings about going through all of this too because you usually hear me talk about everything uh, and hear it from the, the husband side more today. So we have a lot to cover. Let's get started. At the end of our last video, the end of our second week in Houston, Texas, we, were, we wanted to leave the RV park we were in. It was very noisy. We were had two main highways on two sides of the RV park, very loud, noisy, and it wasn't a real well-maintained park. It was an older one, and um, it was only a few minutes. It was only like 15 minutes to the hospital, which was convenient, but we found another RV park that was five miles further, takes the same amount of time, and the roads aren't as crazy to get there. Right. A little less rough, a little smoother ride. That too. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's been a big deal. The neighborhood here is much better. Uh, not nearly the numbers of homeless and other unsavory parts of the neighborhood that we were in. Yeah. It's more comfortable in a lot of ways. Yes. So, and a hundred dollars cheaper. <laughs> So go figure. Anyway, so we're in a very lovely park right now. So that was a very positive thing for my recovery to move. But the day after we moved here, I had an appointment with the radiologist oncologist. I'm not going to say the doctor's names. Um, if you want to know which doctors I saw for my surgery and for the radiology and everything, you can message me and I'll, I'll hopefully get a message back to you somehow. Um, but it doesn't really matter because I went to MD Anderson. That was kind of a no brainer. Um, we were in Corpus Christi over the winter. Gary's a retired pastor in case you're new to our channel. And every winter we serve a different place in the winter time. 
somewhere near uh, warmer winters. Well, yeah, warmer <laughs> winters. And this year it happened to be Corpus Christi. So my choice for what I was going to do for follow up because they didn't have the right kind of cancer doctors in Corpus Christi for me, for my particular kind of cancer, was to either go to San Antonio or to go to Houston. And we chose Houston because it has MD Anderson. MD Anderson is the top cancer center in the U.S. and uh, world renowned. So you can't really make a mistake with whichever doctor you go to there. They're all very prestigious, knowledgeable doctors. And I guess both cases I just chose the first available and I was okay with that. So we met with the radiology psychologist and she gave us the proposed treatment. This treatment is not to reduce a cancer tumor. That is gone. Just to clarify, because I've had people making comments or sending us messages on how to get rid of, our, of my cancer. I don't have cancer anymore, but it can come back. And so this treatment, it's called adjuvant brachytherapy method radiation and if you look that up to get more information about it you will not find the exact same thing that I am having proposed done and that was the really frustrating part for two weeks that's all I did was research research trying to find things um, um, American uh, Cancer Society Mayo Clinic MD Anderson but the big one was the National Institute of Health, the NIH. Those articles are written, I think, mostly for medical people. So if you don't know the terminology, then you spend a whole other set of time looking up all these terms and this definitions of things and what does this mean and is this good or bad. Uh, it, it was just for two solid weeks, that's what I was doing. In the meantime... <laughs> One of the great challenges of trying to find answers to your questions is trying to find answers to your questions. The more you look for the answers, it seems the harder it is to find the answer. There's and another some, question will come up. Yeah, you get lost in all the different directions that it can take you mm -hmm. and you kind of lose track of what you're trying to figure out in the first place. And the other thing you don't find a whole lot of is the natural ways because most medical sites will not share that. So while Orlean was looking at the medical information that's available and trying to get to the information she wanted to sort out, I was looking at the orthomolecular sites and uh, looking for natural things that can be done to hopefully not only prevent but even to pre uh, to improve a person's condition and health mm -hmm. uh, while trying to cope with the reality of cancer the threat of it there are still many sources available and good studies however most of the studies will take you back into the 50s and 60s that's 1950s and 1960s uh, some into the 70s and 80s but current studies are more difficult to find just because of the cost of them and some of the conditions of the studies requirements. Uh, a lot of good information available on what is healthy for a person's body and what is healthy for a person's body is usually healthy for a person's mind and uh, attitude mm -hmm. or peace of mind. Gary's looking at the natural side of things. I'm looking at the medical side of things. We're we're both on across the table from each other, researching, searching, talking to people in medical field that we are friends with, getting their um, opinions on things, getting their input. Oh my gosh, it was mind-boggling. And then on top of that, the doctor who did the surgery, gynecological oncologist surgeon and the radiologist oncologist had different numbers for what my chances of reoccurrence were. 
and what my chances of not getting it back if I had the radiation. Their numbers were not the same. So that was getting confusing. Probably a really stressful thing that happened and it lasted for about 24 hours was when I asked the surgeon in a message on my chart, which is an online way of communicating with the doctors, I asked how did the uterus get removed? Because someone told me that they probably took it out in pieces. And that concerned me because the tumor was in the uterus. And she first she wrote back and she said that the tumor started to leak out during the surgery and so she enclosed it into a bag and took it all out that way and I was like it leaked the tumor leaked that's kind of nervy and then I wrote back to her and I said so I did not see anything in your surgical notes because I read everything after the surgery I read how she what all the procedure was I said I don't recall anything in there about there being any leakage of the tumor I don't remember seeing anything about a bag or in, uh, enclosing the uterus I so I was kind of confused on that but thank you for your information <laughs> and 24 hours later she responded to that and she said I was confused your tumor did not leak it was intact it stayed in the uterus the uterus came out in one piece there was no leakage and there was no need for a bag <laughs> no apology no sorry for the stress this may have caused you um, just, I was confused. I was like, okay, thank you. Another thing we found out in our searches is that there's more than one way to do the adjuvant brachytherapy radiation. There's, there are several ways of doing it. And it's, it somehow it all fall, falls under this one category. But when you're trying to find specifically how it's done, to the area they wanted to do the radiation on, you, it's just, you couldn't find it. The radiologist wanted to do, start treatments the same day as my five week checkup. And I questioned that with the surgeon and I said, is, is my body gonna be healed enough to start these treatments on that day. And she wrote back and she said, nothing until I've examined you. So they didn't agree on that either. The, the radiologist, the first proposal she made was that we were gonna do two days in a row, a weekend off, and then three consecutive days. The surgeon said every other day for a week and a half. So there was just this confusion and they're on the same team on my case so that was really getting hard to know where they're going with this at the time I think the uh, radiologist was trying to rush us through perhaps because of the 4th of July coming up and perhaps because she had picked up on us wanting to get out of Houston uh, maybe thinking that it was an opportunity or an option for us to consider yeah but we, we we don't know for sure on that but some things changed in the last five weeks there have been many messages from from you from women and husbands in several countries who are familiar with this type of cancer or of having radiation or of having because in our last video I mentioned that it was a consideration and that we were we were waiting to get information about it and so some of you responded to that some of you responded telling me your stories of what you've been through um, our prayer list got longer and longer mm -hmm. there are some of you going through some really 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 difficult things and you are in our prayers. 
Some of you are watching this and you're thinking, what's the big deal about radiation? They've been doing it for decades. What's the big deal? And then there are some of you who are going, ah, radiation. I know exactly what your struggle is. Sometimes the more you know, <laughs> there's a saying, ignorance is bliss. Some people will just listen to what their doctors say. They trust their doctor and that's it. They don't question anything. It's just, let's do whatever. And we are not those people. <laughs> we are people who are going to ask questions and we want to know information before we make that decision when it comes to our health. So there are some of you who are thinking, well, why didn't you just do it? And then there are others who are thinking, who know what our struggle was. We have the air conditioning off and just a little fan running. So we're trying to get through this kind of fast. If we're talking fast, that's why. I had several things that I was struggling with. Uh, one was I got cancer. And even though our lifestyle, our diet, all the things we've done for many, many years has been to prevent from getting cancer or getting sick. We've never smoked. We don't drink sodas. We don't um, eat a lot of garbage kind of stuff. We just, we've really been very careful about that and watch that we get a, we exercise, mostly just walking, but it's, it's something, you know, we, we're, we're active. Uh, we like to hike when we can in places. Uh, right now it's like flatland, so. <laughs> There's no place to do that. We're looking forward to getting some hills. Um, but it just didn't make sense, you know, why. But we have a theory, or at least I have a theory. We kind of agree on it um, as far as what causes a lot of diseases. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So that was my first struggle was I got it once. Can I get it again? Number two was that there are risks either way. There was a risk of ha with getting the radiation and there was a risk with not getting the radiation. There's also benefits for both. So that was trying to weigh them out. Some of the risks with radiation, according to several websites that I looked at, and these were cancer websites, said that they don't always know what the side effects will be years later. You know, sometimes you don't know what the side effects are from the treatments now and what they will be years from now so that's the that was a big thing to weigh on my brain as well we know people who have gone through radiation chemo and they got cancer back anyway we know people who did um, just did not do any treatments at all and didn't get cancer back and then it goes the other way too so it it was just such a struggle. I think a lot of it depends on what kind of cancer you have, where you were treated. We've found that out that it really does make a difference. Sometimes what hospital you went to, what, what the doctors are knowledgeable about, uh, what kind of technology do they have available that other hospitals don't have. And so there was just a lot of things. Do they go back to their old lifestyles again? Do they continue doing what they did before? What kind of support group did they have? What's their environment? What are the different uh, risks that they are they're living in day to day? There's just so many factors in there on why some people get it back and some people don't. There was also that little nagging voice that kept coming at me that kept saying you got cancer once you could get it again and how all the pieces fit together that brought us here at this time through the, the number of different people that we met it's just such an amazing story when to, to think about how we were so blessed through different people we never knew before that guided us and and we ended up here at MD Anderson so was it 
um, God blessing us with knowledgeable medical people. Um, there was just all those things that kind of kept going through my head. As a little review, for those of you who maybe didn't see the other videos on this, I had stage 1B endometrial carcinoma, which is uh, cancer in the uterus. They took the uterus with the tumor in it. They also took my ovaries, the fallopian tubes, the cervix, and six sentinel lymph nodes. All of those were cancer free. So why are they why are they suggesting radiation? Part of it was because there could have possibly been some stray cells that got out or got that could still be lingering in there somewhere. Although there's nothing left, so I'm not sure. But there is one thing left, and um, in the vagina cuff, where it was cut away from the cervix, is where endometrial carcinoma tends to come back to. And that's the targeted radiation that they wanted to do. It's done internally, not externally. It's done internally right on the cuff. The radiation treatments would take between three to five minutes total. Um, and then the number of times they kept saying five. Sounds like easy peasy, right? <sighs> but we will go back to the other struggles. All right. So for just a minute here, let's just talk about what can cause cancers, heart disease, diabetes, just all the different diseases that people get and why is age a factor because age keeps coming up as a number one reason why I could get this back I'm over 65 so that they just kept saying age and I kept arguing with them and I'm saying but I'm not like other 65 year old women or 67 or whatever I'm I'm not all are the same and so age just to me that just seemed like that can't be the biggest reason <sighs> but it comes down to I believe a lot of it is um, we carry a lot of emotional baggage and over the years that emotional baggage accumulates when you think of the places that people usually hold their emotions it's their bosom and their abdomen, their gut. So then you think about the different diseases that come there. Heart disease, breast cancer, um, lung diseases, those kinds of things. Those are all behind here. And then you think about the things that happen in your when you have emotional baggage in your gut. And you think about that and it's your intestines, your uterus, all the reproductive um, organs, um, for men, the prostate, I mean all those things are down in this lower part here. So it just kind of, you just kind of wonder. And the Bible does talk about these types of things. So we turn to the Bible for answers and we, we, we did that, we did it often. But just some of the Bible passages, um, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path from Psalm 119. And then you have uh, the, all the different times that Jesus talks about, um, give me your anxieties, your, your troubles, your griefs, your sorrows, your uh, worries, and, and I will take them away from you. I will... I will lessen your burden. And Jesus talks about do not fear. 365 times in the New Testament, one for each day, there are Bible passages that tell us do not fear because he has overcome the world. We are sinful people and over the years that sin accumulates in our body too, even though we're forgiven, 
It's the guilt of sin. The guilt of sin. The guilt of sin yep. that, that we struggle with. And, and it uh, ages us. Yeah. So. God, God forgives our sin in Christ completely, but we still have the guilt of it in our, you know, our heart. Yep. And in our gut. One of the Bible passages that really stood out to me was, Be still and know that I am God. And the day of, that I had to make my decision was um, at my five-week checkup. And I actually had three more weeks that I could have taken to think about it more. And I'm like, <sighs> we were so wrung out and just was at the point of making a decision rather than delay yeah. going through any more struggle it would yeah. get us more frustrated yep so it came to a point where you're standing on the edge and you either jump into the lake or you walk away and we went with the doctor we got more information and then we talked about it some more I was still struggling and then we just kind of sat there for a few minutes and talked about things and I went over the my concerns and I finally said I can do both <laughs> I can do the radiation and I can do things to heal my body afterwards I can do things that will um, naturally that will help to prevent cancer for coming back as well and we know that either way there were risks but either way God can bless it and then I walked through the door through to go into radiology to make my appointment and it was like I still did not have peace but it was like the next day is when I started my first treatment so I've only had the one treatment so far. And uh, by the time you see this, I think I will have my second one because um, I have one in the morning. And so to bring us to that point, now I feel like, okay, we're just moving forward now from here. This is it. We're going to trust in God that he's going to bless this one way or another. And the radiologist, the oncologist, actually, she's a Christian, and she made the comment, if you get it back and there's nothing we can do for you the next time, if it's too advanced or whatever, she said, then you just accept it's your time. And she's right. We, we don't know how much time we have in this world. And no matter what, we know where we'll be when we die it's it's sad for those we leave behind but we're gonna be happy hmm. we're gonna be at peace and um, it's just a, a bit of a step beyond where we normally talk about someday this could happen or that could happen to somebody I, I love uh, to be confronted with uh, is this the time and then uh, I, I want to put that off a lot longer. <laughs> I don't want to have to deal with that today or tomorrow. I'd rather deal with that another 10, 30 years down the road. Um, but it's walking in faith, and that's always a challenge for Christians as well as, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what kind of struggles you're going through. What a, what a challenge to step out in faith. A and leap of faith. Not... Not I, jumped living, in, yeah. I jumped into the lake. <laughs> and, and not uh, wrestling in fear anymore, but resting in the love of God. And that drives out the fears. Mm -hmm. But you still have to step forward. Yeah. <laughs> so the decision is, is made and it was a good, yeah. was a good was, way to go. Even the doctor said there is no right or wrong answer. Yeah. But... And they always add that, you know, so it's like, because this doesn't mean I won't get it back. This just decreases the chances that I could. So it gives us an, a medical advantage. Yeah. Warm in here. <laughs> We're going to get through this. We're almost done. So the number of treatments that I'm going to be having is five. And again, you're probably thinking, what was the big deal? But 
for those of you who understand, you know what, what our dilemma was. And um, they're, they're being spaced out. Um, they, they finally came to the same conclusion. So I started on the 28th. I had my, my five week exam on the 27th of June. The 28th was my first one. And that was a long day because there's things that they do. There were two tests that they did in beforehand to determine different things and um, um, to make a pre precise target and that kind of thing. And then, um, the, and then I had my first treatment and I was in this waiting room and we're all wearing the same dress. We both, we all had on uh, a gown backwards and a gown frontward. And I walked in, I said, oh, we all shopped at the same <laughs> dress shop. They were all three dealing with breast cancer. They were younger than I was. There was an older lady across from me who was endometrial carcinoma. She was stage two, I was stage one B. Um, and she had uh, other complications. So she needs 25 treatments. And I think it's, five days in a row and then weekends off. Mine started the 28th, had the weekend off, then it'll be July 1st, 3rd, and 5th, another weekend off, and then the 8th will be my last treatment. And they say that we could leave right away, that I shouldn't have any issues with travel or anything. They said I might be a little tired but other than that, they said there should be no pain or any complications. So that's what so we're praying for. We're on that, yeah. Praying yeah. for that. Uh, yeah, because we have a long ways to go to get back to Wisconsin where our family is and friends. The healing from the surgery has gone very well. The doctor, the surgeon uh, gave the go-ahead, said everything looks great. You don't have to worry about coming back here for another three to four five months something three. like that yeah that was weird too yeah. it's supposed to be so, every three months and then now she's changed it to three to five well i think mm -hmm. the healing is just going so well mm -hmm. that, that, so uh, we're free to go back but the healing process even though it's going very well is still a process and will be for another month or two mm -hmm. um, so we don't know what spending four hours bouncing around in a pickup truck is going to do uh, so that's kind of our, our high side for travel time is four hours and it may well be half that or less. I don't know. And that's making at least days. one or two stops right. in that four hours. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're going to really pace so we, it. We deep. don't, uh, we don't know yet how quickly that trip is going to go, but it doesn't matter. We're retired. <laughs> 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 we, we, do, we do have a couple of family things in July that we're hoping to make back for for sure by the last weekend with our kids. They're all, they all have off that weekend and we're hoping to get together with them. Yeah, we, we've been kind of missing them a bunch. Yeah, well yeah. we missed our, our twin grandson's graduation from high school and their party. And we've missed other things going on. All those cheery, smiling faces. And, yeah. yeah. Um, but I hope you are getting something out of these. I know a lot of you have been thanking us for this, these videos, these, um, this healing journey. Um, you're learning things from it. And I, I'm learning from you. And we're supporting each other. I never realized how big of a deal this endometrial carcinoma was. I had no idea so many and, so yeah. many people so many women and when I talked in the uh, one of the videos about the emotions that I went through uh, through history having a hysterectomy I, I it was I, I wondered if I was the only one because I, I had never heard anybody else talk about some of those emotions and uh, to hear from a lot of you saying that you went through the same things that was that was uh, made me feel good <laughs> that we were on the same page with somebody else and, and that's a support group, so that was good too. God's blessings to you, whatever struggles you're going through healing um, in your own um, health journey. Um, and uh, you know, God has a lot of answers for us. We, we just have to be still <laughs> and listen and uh, just 
shut out the noise sometimes and get away from the computers and all those things that we're looking for answers and just breathe. Remember that Jesus often commented on the disciples and their faith and seldom said much on the upside. He's always confronted them with, oh, you have little faith. Mm -hmm. And yet they were blessed with a little faith in the great Savior. And times like this when we too feel little <laughs> in our faith and yet God is faithful and the same Savior invites us, come to me, all you are weary and burdened. I'll give you peace. I'll give you rest. Uh, what, a, what a great gift that is to us and encourage you to that same invitation from Christ to know that he's your Savior. He's with you. The Good Shepherd never fails. Amen. Amen. And until next time, God, God bless. bless.